If you haven't yet heard of ZNS, let me introduce you to the high-level concept. ZNS stands for Zoned Namespace. ZNS has made it into the 2.0 version of the NVMe specification, signifying official standardization. The promise of ZNS is that the restriction of writes being sequential within a zone enables a leaner SSD controller by eliminating the need for garbage collection on the device, reducing over-provisioning and reducing DRAM in the controller. My name is Adam Manzanares, and today I will be presenting ZNS, Reducing TCO and Enabling the Ecosystem. This title represents what we wish to achieve with ZNS, lowering total cost of ownership and how we rely and enhance the open source ZNS software ecosystem. If you haven't yet heard of ZNS, let me introduce you to the high level concept. ZNS stands for Zoned Namespace, which is an extension to the namespace concept of the NVMe interface specification. A namespace is a contiguous set of logical block addresses exposed to the host system. ZNS breaks an NVMe namespace into distinct, logically contiguous zones that are typically much smaller than the capacity of a namespace. Application writes to a zone must be in sequential order with the device rejecting non-sequential writes. This constraint means ZNS SSDs are not drop-in replacements for conventional SSDs. According to the standard, all zones in a namespace must be the same size. ZNS has made it into the 2.0 version of the NVMe specification, signifying official standardization. In addition, products have been announced by Samsung and Western Digital, moving ZNS a step closer to mainstream adoption. The promise of ZNS is that the restriction of writes being sequential within a zone enables a leaner SSD controller by eliminating the need for garbage collection on the device. This has the direct benefit of reducing over-provisioning and has the potential for reducing DRAM in the controller. Reducing the device over-provisioning and DRAM requirements leads to a lower acquisition cost for the device. If the ZNS SSD maintains the performance of a conventional SSD, this leads to a lower total cost of ownership. Another benefit of eliminating device level garbage collection is that quality of service can be improved by having the host explicitly manage garbage collection. One challenge to widespread ZNS adoption is the fact that key implementation details that impact performance and quality of service are not standardized. The size of zones, number of max open zones, and zone mapping are all not standardized. To illustrate the concept of active and open zones, draw your attention to the state model diagram representing state transitions that are possible for ZNS zones. Zones start off in the empty state and are transitioned to the open state with a write or with an explicit open command. Open as well as closed zones are in the active state requiring online device resources to maintain state. A zone can be transitioned out of the active state by being marked as read-only, being set as full, or marked as offline. Another implementation detail impacting performance and quality of service is how zones are placed on SSD dies. This is illustrated in the zone to die mapping figure. From this figure, one can see that striping across dies can improve bandwidth by leveraging multiple dies during read-write operations, but comes at the cost of making garbage collection impact all of the dies that the zone is striped across. This has a negative impact on quality of service control because garbage collection now impacts multiple dies. In a ZNS SSD, there are typically many more zones than dies, so having some working knowledge of the zone to SSD internal resource mapping is beneficial for applications. Finally, the intended use case of the ZNS SSD influences optimal architecture parameters. As an example, read-dominated workloads don't need support for many active zones and can tolerate a larger zone size because garbage collection is infrequent. Read-write mixed workloads demand more active zones to support multiple concurrent write streams. A read-write mixed workload benefits from smaller zone sizes in order to limit the impact of garbage collection. The small zones give the host more control over quality of service. A controller design that maintains the promised benefits of ZNS is preferable, but this also means that host software has to take on more responsibilities. Now that we mention host software, we will deep dive into some challenges that are presented by the current ZNS software ecosystem. 
We will also discuss solutions we have developed to address these challenges. Beyond standardization and hardware implementations of ZNS, the ZNS software ecosystem has not been currently settled. For example, for a ZNS SSD to be listed as a zoned block device in the Linux kernel, the device has to have the three following characteristics. First, it must support the zoned append operation. The zoned append operation takes a write from the host and allows the controller to pick an LBA within the zone where the data is written and return this LBA to the host. Second, the size of zones must be a power of two. The last constraint is that there should not be any zone operation characteristics, denoted as ZOC, set for the namespace. An example of a zone operation characteristic is zone active excursions, where a controller may transition an implicit open, explicit open, or closed zone to the full state under set conditions. Beyond being seen as a block device, a storage device is typically exposed through a file system. Mainstream file systems such as ext4 and XFS do not have ZNS support and there is not a clear path to making these file systems support ZNS. These mainstream file systems rely on in-place updates which are at odds with the sequential write requirements of a ZNS SSD. F2FS, a log structured file system, needs a conventional zone to store metadata and a zone namespace is currently comprised of only sequential zones. F2FS does have support to use a separate conventional block device for metadata, with another option being the use of the linear device mapper to logically glue a separate conventional block device to the front of a zone namespace. F2FS zone support was originally designed for SMR hard disk drives, and there may be room for optimizations for a ZNS SSD. ButterFS has initial support for ZNS SSDs, but it only supports a single profile, which prohibits it from using the ButterFS features of RAID or deduplication when leveraging a ZNS SSD. In addition, ButterFS is not as mature as XFS or ext4. To address some of the issues with lagging upstream ecosystem support, we are working on the zone character device abstraction. This exposes a character device that is a direct path to the NVMe driver managing the ZNS SSD. This pathway is not dependent on the features required for a zoned block device. We are currently building a fast asynchronous pathway to the device driver, leveraging a new high performance asynchronous Linux kernel API IOU ring. When leveraging our NVMe character device plumbing, this interface can be seen as an alternative to a user space NVMe driver, such as SPDK. The benefit we bring is that the OS still has full access control of the device and all I.O. submissions pass through the Linux kernel. Beyond the kernel level infrastructure, we have developed XNVME, an I.O. interface abstraction layer that provides flexible access to the various Linux kernel I.O. interfaces, as well as Windows support in an upcoming release. This allows an application developer to program to the XNVME API and be able to use underlying OS interfaces by changing the XNVMe configuration and not the application source code. In addition, we are developing a hardware solution that complies with the current zoned block device constraints, which we have tentatively tiled generic ZNS. Lastly, I would like to highlight that we have developed the support for ZNS device emulation in QEMU. This allows developers without ZNS hardware the ability to prototype ZNS applications. The previous slide focused mainly on plumbing in the Linux kernel but we should spend some time talking about the applications that are a good fit for ZNS SSDs. Knowing that ZNS requires sequential writes, can we find applications that are widely used and write to persistent storage in a sequential manner? RocksDB, a KV store developed at Facebook that has lineage from the LevelDB project created at Google, is a perfect candidate for ZNS integration. Its core design is based on the log-structured merge tree data structure. The basic flow for application writes is that they are first coalesced in memory inside of the mem table that is illustrated in the figure displayed in the slide. Data within mem tables is eventually written sequentially into sorted string table files, which are later merged as the number of files grows at a given level. The key property of all of the writes to files used by RocksDB is that the data is appended to each sorted string table file, which is compliant with the ZNS sequential zone access requirements. 
RocksDB is widely used and has been integrated as a storage engine for MySQL, opening up many use cases. RocksDB has a modular, file-based approach to accessing persistent storage with a well-defined storage access API that is denoted as an env. We have leveraged this API to write a ZNS-compatible RocksDB env that is built on top of FlexAlloc. FlexAlloc is a tunable block allocator we have developed that has ZNS support. FlexAlloc was originally designed to provide a lightweight storage abstraction above a raw block device. Being lightweight and close to raw block device access, FlexAlloc lends itself to device-specific optimizations such as ZNS compatibility. FlexAlloc leverages the XNVMe library to provide flexible access to multiple storage pathways without requiring source code changes. A key design decision of FlexAlloc is that it does not hide all of the ZNS constraints behind design decisions hidden from the target application, but instead exposes ZNS parameters to consumers of the FlexAlloc API. This is done in order to support ZNS-dependent software optimizations being possible in layers above FlexAlloc. Beyond developing RocksDB support, we recognize the importance of file systems and the tools and workflows built around file systems. In order to avoid placing the application data written to a ZNS SSD on an island only accessible by the FlexAlloc RocksDB storage engine, we have developed a user space file system leveraging Fuse that allows tooling such as LS and copy to be used on the data written by our RocksDB env. From the figure, we would like to highlight that both the Fuse and RocksDB portion of the figure see the same files and also reuse some of the same components. It is our hope that XNVMe and FlexAlloc become widely used software abstractions that form the basis of open source storage system software. Now I will show a simple demo of RocksDB running on a ZNS SSD. I will display the files on the ZNS SSD, move data to a conventional block device, then restart RocksDB from the data on the conventional device that was originally written to the ZNS SSD. We start our demo with the makefs flexalloc command. We point this command at the ZNS SSD that is using our zone character device abstraction. We also use a separate metadata device for all in-place metadata updates. Now I'd like to display the state of all the zones on the ZNS SSD. Since we've run this makefs.flexalloc command, we now reset all of the zones and have the ZNS SSD all zones in the empty state. Now we run RocksDB on top of the ZNS SSD. We do this by indicating that we want to use flexalloc and we also point at the ZNS SSD as well as the metadata device that we've supplied earlier. So the command successfully finishes and we can go back and examine the zone states again and we see that some of the zones have been transitioned to full, some are in the closed state, but we've written data to the ZNS SSD. So now what I'd like to do is show a folder on the file system that is currently empty. And so we see no files inside of this directory. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our FlexFS fuse-based file system and it uses the zone character device as well as the metadata device. And we mount it on that same folder, which we will visualize again. And now we see that it's filled with the sorted string table files generated by RocksDB. Next, I would like to show a separate folder on the same system that is on a conventional SSD. This folder is currently empty. Now we will copy all of the files from the ZNS SSD to this folder. If we go back and visualize the folder on the conventional SSD, we now see that all the SS table files are on the conventional SSD. The last step of this demo is that we actually restart RocksDB from the data on the conventional SSD and we find all 16,000 key value pairs. This indicates that we're able to copy data from data generated on the ZNS SSD to a conventional SSD and restart RocksDB. In summary, we want you to take away that ZNS is here 
and is part of the NVMe 2.0 standard. Products have been announced from Western Digital and Samsung. ZNS performance is dependent on non-standard architecture details, such as the size of zones, zone to die mapping, as well as the number of active zones supported by the controller. Beyond hardware, the software ecosystem is still in development. There are limitations placed by current open source software, but we have developed software-based solutions around these limitations and are also exploring hardware-based approaches. A key driver of ZNS adoption is finding the target applications for ZNS. On this front, we have identified RocksDB as a primary target for ZNS integration and have created ZNS-aware software abstractions during our RocksDB integration. It is our hope that these storage abstractions will be reused by applications exploring ZNS support. Lastly, since RocksDB is used as a storage engine for MySQL, we believe RocksDB ZNS implies MySQL ZNS integration. If you would like to know more about some of the storage abstractions we have developed to support ZNS, please watch the YouTube video that explains FlexAlloc in more detail. We have also provided a link to XMVME, a software layer that provides abstract access to operating system storage interfaces and is used inside of FlexAlloc. I would like to end this presentation by thanking you for your time and attention.